the Autodromo Nazionale di Monza, Ferrari's home circuit, and this is where the Tifosi come to worship. After the Scuderia's victory in Le Mans, nobody in Italy is unaware that Ferrari are racing on home tarmac. A lot of Tifosi, so let's do a good race. If fan power is a factor, Ferrari will romp home 1-2, but Toyota will be desperate to avenge their defeat at Le Mans just a month earlier in round five of the FIA World Endurance Championship. Formula One legend René Arnoux was on hand. He would give the start engines command, and the former Ferrari stalwart. Sara Bovi claiming pole position in GTE Am in the Iron Dames Porsche. The Porsche looking very strong here in Ferrari's heartland in the GT class. Pole in LMP2 went to Team WRT, courtesy of a stunning lap from Robert Kubica. They start at the front of a packed field. And in the searing heat of the central Italian summer, Toyota Gazoo Racing will start from pole position after a flying run from Kamui Kobayashi. Italia, l'Italia se desta dell'elmo di Cipio se cinta la testa dove la vittoria le porga la chioma che schiava di Roma e Dio la creò stringiamoci a corte siamo pronti alla morte siamo pronti alla morte l'Italia chiamò Stringiamoci a corte, siamo pronti alla morte, siamo pronti alla morte, l'Italia chiamò, sì! The anticipation was electric. Dinde Capello, the Grand Marshal, multiple Le Mans winner for Audi, would start the race. And the fans taking shade wherever they could from the sweltering temperatures, eager to see what the six hours of Monza would bring them. are ready, the fans are very ready. Let battle commence in Monza. We are ready to race in Monza. Round five of the championship. Red lights remain on and away we go. The pole man in the white and red Toyota. That's Mike Conway. The red Ferrari, Miguel Molina, trying to tuck him behind. Look at the second Toyota on the extreme left. Sebastian Buemi, now he drops back. The Persia of Mikkel Jensen goes around the outside. Will the Ferrari lead? Oh, a spin! That is the second Ferrari of Antonio Giovinazzi. The Proton Porsche had to straight line the chicane as well. Giovinazzi does get going, but that's a real disappointment for Ferrari. The Le Mans winning car turned around in the very first corner. Rushing down to the Primo Varianti, and it's Sebastian Buemi who drops back, locks up, and tags the Ferrari into a spin. Oh, contact further back in the GTM class, and the yellow Corvette nearly hits the spinning Ferrari. There's the contact, Buemi turns Giovinazzi around, on board with the Peugeot, oh, just not enough room for everyone. Toyota leads with Mike Conway, dust being kicked up behind and that has shuffled the pack, there's number 8 Toyota, he's way down the order and there's the Vector Sport car getting eased out onto the gravel in LMP2. 
So Toyota lead from Ferrari and Peugeot in third place. A year on from Peugeot making its hypercar debut at Monza. It's looking racy. So is the United Auto Sports car down the inside of number 10 Vector car. The Vector car being monstered. Battle for fourth, Alex Lynn with a dark blue nose on the Cadillac and Nico Muller's Peugeot comes the long way around the outside on the straight. He moves up into fourth and does not make it through correctly as the straight line the corner. Huge crowd here all weekend to watch Ferrari and they will be disappointed with the problems for the 51 car. But Miguel Molina in 50. Oh, and there's Vector facing the wrong way again at the Roggia. So Dorian Pan on the inside in the first of the red, white and green Prema cars and Matthias Kaiser, the driver from Luxembourg in the number 10 Vector Sport LMP2 car, make contact. Battle on between the Porsches. The gold Hertz Team Jota car ahead of car number five. This is the first of the Penske Porsches. Michael Christensen pulls out of the toe, looking to go the long way round the outside for sixth position. Does he get it? Oh, yes, he does. Just sneaks in front and right behind is Sebastian Buemi. So the number eight car in eighth place, but there must surely be a penalty coming their way. Green and yellow, Le Mans winners into Europol. That's Jakub Schmichowski just hanging on in front of the number nine Prema car of Filip Ugran. So Polish driver ahead of one from Romania. Lead battle in LMP2, the gold Jota car, little contact there for leader David Heinemeyer Hansen. Right behind him in the number 22 blue United car is Ben Hanley, but he loses ground ahead of Van der Garde, tries to go around the outside in the 23 United car. Didn't get both of them, but he has moved up to second from 11th on the grid. What a start for the Dutch driver. Hanley wants to come back at him. Big fight in GTE Am. This is the four car train for second place. The orange Aston Martin, Ahmad Al Harty. Behind him, the Ferrari, Lewis Perez Compact. Then the Corvette, that's Ben Keating. Trouble at the first chicane. The car guy and D station cars get together. That's Japanese drivers making contact. Takeshi Kimura in the yellow car guy car, maybe being a little ambitious going around. Massive crowd here cheering on the Ferraris, but there is Ben Keating in the Corvette going by the Aston Martin. There was a little touch there in the battle for second from the Aston. Little snag at the back of the car from Lewis Perez Compank. He's slow and Christian Reed behind in the Porsche trying to work his way up the order. It's the Iron Dames, Sara Bovi. Oh, trouble! D Station is off and that is it. The very anti Ascari. What has happened there? Well, this could bring out the safety car for the first time in the race. Battle for second at LMP2, the blue United car, Ben Hanley, sides by David Heinemeyer Hansen in the Jota car and right behind the two WRT machines. That is second, third, fourth and fifth in class. Gerda van der Garde pulling away out front, yellow flags are out at the chicane. Look at the debris field as well, that's from Hashino's crash. Well, they will need a safety car, I think, to clear this up. That car's going nowhere in a hurry. So what happens here, Satoshi Hoshino slams off to the side, was there contact? Looking back from the Jota car, that's Sebastian Buemi in the Toyota, just hits the Aston Martin and boom into the wall. I think there is something on the rear, I have movement, I think there is something touch me a lot on the rear. Sorry with how everything is unfolding, I'm, I'm doing my best. Sorry, guys. It's okay, mate. It's only 20 minutes gone. Still a long race to go. Only 20 minutes in, and he's already made heavy contact with two other cars. There could be some penalties to serve for the number eight Toyota. A scramble for the pit lane as the safety car is scrambled. And here comes almost the entire LMP2 field. Both United Auto Sports cars stop. Lots of GTE AM cars coming in as well. Both Prema cars, the Jota car that was leading in LMP2 with David Heinemeyer Hansen, he stays in. It is a busy, busy pit lane. It's a great start to the race for the 23 United car of Jeder van der Garde. Today uh, I knew I had to make the moves from uh, from last to, to first in a couple of laps. Uh, 
Yeah, like I did in the past, you know. I, I like it when I'm uh, from the back uh, moving forward. Uh, yeah, that was really, really good. The car's performing quite well, actually, now. I think we changed, made a step compared to yesterday, so uh, very happy. Back to green flag racing, Mike Conroy in the number seven Toyota stayed out of the pits. So did Mikkel Jensen in the 93 Peugeot. And look at the Peugeot coming up behind the Toyota. It started on the softer option, the medium tyre Toyota on the hard tyres. The 50 Ferrari right behind, and that's Miguel Molina. And through into the lead for the very first time here in Monza goes the Peugeot. Great reception from the team. And the Peugeot drivers really keen to produce a big result here. Here comes the Toyota. Conway fighting back down to the Roger. But the Peugeot will stay in front. It's a long, hot race ahead. Um, we haven't done a lot of running this week with some technical issues, so I don't think we've got the full clear picture where the strategy is going to play out. But at the same time, uh, at the moment, it's doing a good job. Um, but we, you just have to remain fairly relaxed and see where the distance goes. Um, but when you see where the difference is and where the team is from a year ago, like you say, um, it's nice to see and it, it rewards back the man hours of going in. Ferrari definitely in the game here for second place. This is Miguel Molina on Mike Conway. Ferrari beat Toyota at Le Mans. Can they do it here again at Monza? He has to squeeze his way in, but he's up to second. One minute stop and go penalty car eight for a contact with car 777. So a minute in the pit lane for the number eight Toyota. And that's for this contact with Satoshi Hoshino. Hoshino is OK, but that car's destroyed. Miguel Molina holding on to second place. Mikkel Jensen leading the race for Ferrari, flashing the headlights at Sebastian Buemi. He got like six blue flags already. Yeah, we are talking to race control. We are talking to them. Buemi ignoring the blue flags that tell him a faster car is behind and holding up the race leader. OK, you look far enough now. Faster, faster now, Luke, I'm pulling the gap. Copy. If you're pulling a gap, you stay in front. Well, the team backing him up. He wasn't pulling a gap. He is holding up the leader. Buemi desperate to stay on the lead lap and through goes the Peugeot finally. Now that's not a battle for position. The next job, of course, will be the 50 Ferrari trying to get by the number eight car with the number seven right behind him in third place. So Buemi not earning many friends this weekend. There's Linda Jackson, CEO of Peugeot, Carlos Tavares, the boss of the Stellantis group. And here is the battle for second place. Through goes the Peugeot, the 94 car in fourth place, running across the grass. Now what's happened there? Has he missed the breaking point? No, the car does not slow down for Nico Muller. So I was stuck in here, stuck in here. No, it's okay again. It was chipped even off the brake, I couldn't stop it. The gearbox has been this Peugeot's Achilles heel for a year. It's all about the electronics not talking to each other. Into the pit lane, Sebastian Buemi, a 10 second stop and hold before they start the pit stop. And that's the penalty for turning around the 51 Ferrari on the first corner. Leader is in, this is the 93 Peugeot, they're just shuffling it into position to take the fuel. It won't be a driver change, won't be a tyre change either. Number seven, Mike Conway into the pits from the lead on zero energy. Look at that graphic at the top. That's running it fine. And that means Antonio Felix da Costa takes the lead of the race for Hertz Team Jota now. Some of the hypercar fields stopped while the safety car was running. Some didn't. And so they're now on split strategies. Away goes Conway. How is this race going to play out for Toyota? Hurts Team Joe to lead from the six Penske Porsche and the number two Cadillac. There goes the number five car through ahead of the Toyota for seventh. Iron Dames are in from the lead of GTE Am. Could they end up on the podium here? The Porsches have looked very strong all weekend at this Ferrari circuit. 
Red and white Toyota number seven, that's Mike Conway moving up ahead of Nico Muller's 94 Peugeot. That's the car that had the gear selector problems. So that's a change for eighth place. Same again. I couldn't doubt you, man. I think this does doubt you. I break all first foot. And here, Nico Muller running deep into the chicane. Couldn't get the car to change down gears, and that's part of its braking process. And Mike Conway, well, he has to be brave and go the long way round in Curva Grande. Proton Competition's hypercar from fifth place in the pit lane with Jimmy Bruni. They only saw the car for the first time on Wednesday of race week. Cadillac number two in from fourth place. Alex Lynn will hand over to Richard Westbrook. And this car did stop during the safety car, so they're on a split strategy compared to half the field. 51 Ferrari is in from third place on zero energy remaining, running these cars right to the very limit. You don't get anything by carrying around lots of fuel. Antonio Giovinazzi handing over to Alessandro Pierre Guidi. Listen to that crowd. They are loving every minute of this. Here comes our new race leader with the top three on that alternate strategy in the pit lane. Back to the top comes the number 50 Ferrari of Miguel Molina. Part of a third in LMP2. Oliver Rasmussen now in a gold Jota car. Die bombing Fabio Scherer into the Parabolica. He's been chasing Scherer for several laps. Caught Scherer absolutely by surprise there. Great move. We'll take a look. Rasmussen out of the slipstream, even as Scherer's starting to turn in. That is bold racing. Here comes Rasmussen for second, down to Ascari, going around the outside, that's a fantastic move, he's in the gravel, can he hang on to it? He does, up to second place in LMP2, and Shera also attacking the United Auto Sports car, does he get through? Yes, he does. Kevin Escher in the red and white Porsche has just moved up to sixth place, ahead of the 93 Peugeot of Mikkel Jensen. So the six Penske Porsche moves up, and in fact that will become fifth place because his teammate, the number five car, is in the pit lane. And here's how it happened. Estra harassing the back of the 93 car who drifts out wide into the second Lesmo, and the Porsche goes by. 93 Peugeot under pressure. Alessandro Pierre Guidi, the 51 Ferrari, the car that won at Le Mans, goes by Jensen. That was easy. Something's wrong with the Peugeot. Something is definitely wrong with the 93 car. And look at this, Jensen again running out wide. The Ferrari's got all the grip in the world and just motors away so easily. Lead battle in Monza. Mike Conway chasing Miguel Molina. Molina squirreling over the curbs there. Conway coming down to Ascari. He's going to have to go the long way around the outside. Oh, Molina has chopped him and forced him onto the grass. That was close at high speed. A look back from Molina. Conway's coming. Does Molina see him? I think he possibly did. Yeah, <laughs> not convinced about that. Driver change now, Miguel Molina handing over to Nick Nielsen in the race leading Ferrari. But Toyota's number seven car yet to pit stays out front. So far it's, it's been a very compet competitive race. We are trying to push, I tried to give the, the car back in the first position. So I, I did it and, and let's see now. Uh, it's very good to race here in Monza with this atmosphere. And we, we, we are pushing so hard to give a, a good result uh, to, to, all of to all the people. Nearly one third distance, just about four hours remaining in the six hours of Monza and a driver change in the lead Toyota. Mike Conway, the starting driver is out. Jose Maria Lopez takes over and they will lose the lead of the race. Now there's a problem with the 38 Jota hypercar as he gets passed by the 51 Ferrari for second. He's got all his hazard warning lights on. Normally that means that the pit lane speed limiter is engaged. 
Oh, looks like they've got an electronic issue. Oh, and trouble for the Peugeot. This is the 94 car. Outshift or downshift, did it work? These cars don't have a manual gear lever like a road car. Everything is electronics with paddle shifters on the steering wheel. And at the Ascari chicane, he just went straight across the gravel and the grass without downshifting. The car does not slow down as the driver's expecting. Well, nothing for it for Peugeot, but to put the car back into the garage and try and fix the electronic problems, fingers crossed for Peugeot. Battle for fifth place in Hypercar. Down the inside into the Roger comes Jose Maria Lopez. Takes the spot away from the red and white Porsche of Michael Christensen. Christensen triple stinting his tyres. Looks like that is losing grip to his rivals. And the number 50 Ferrari coming up behind him as well. Nick Nielsen on much fresher tyres than the Porsche in front of him. This should be pretty straightforward if he can get a good run down to the Varianti Ascari. He's looking to go the long way round the outside. The teams have a limited number of tyres. They have to use them more than once. And around the outside for sixth place goes Nielsen. Job done. Oh, trouble at the second Lesmo corner. That is Gabriel Aubrey in the Vector Sport number 10 car. Cool, they've had a tough race already. Look at the number nine Prema car on the inside. Ben Viscal makes contact and unfortunately that unsettles the Vector car. Aubrey's got no way of saving it. Hard hit in the barriers. Again, Viscal on the kerbs on the inside. Can't control the car, makes contact and Vector's race is over. Well, this is trouble for Hurst Team Jota from third place. They've had to come in behind the safety car when the pits are closed. Yiffy Yi ready to take over. They cannot do a driver change. They can only take five seconds worth of fuel to give them a couple of laps to survive or they'd have run out. And Antonio Felix da Costa, look, was livid. to green flag racing in this busy six hours of Monza. We're not even halfway through yet. And this massive four-way battle in GTE Am. Two Porsches, the Corvette and the Aston Martin with a Ferrari in tow. Jose Maria Lopez leads for Toyota just about five seconds ahead of Nick Nielsen. Toyota all on hard tyres. Nielsen three mediums, but a hard left rear, the tyre that gets all the punishment here at Monza. Jota's customer Porsche makes his driver change now to Yiffy Yi, but he can't get going. What's happened to the Porsche? My steering wheel basically just froze completely. I, I could still up and down shift, but none of the buttons and obviously none of the information was, was correct as it was just frozen. So trying to deal with that. Uh, yeah, the pit stop took way too long because of it. And then we had to power cycle the car once I left the pit lane. So just Honestly, things out of our control. I thought I thought we were doing a really good job with, with what we had. Third place battle. Here comes Jean-Eric Van in the Peugeot on the inside of Michael Christensen. Christensen still in that car that he started two and a half hours earlier. And through goes the fresher tired Peugeot back into a podium position. Great news for the French team and its team boss. And look at this in replay at the top of the screen. Here comes the number eight Toyota passing both Porsches as they squabble for position. The best place Porsche at the moment is the customer Proton car in fifth. The Penske factory cars eighth and ninth here. Replay of the battle for sixth place in GTM at the Roger. Michelle Gatting sticking her nose down the inside and just tagging the back of the fry of Lewis Perez Compact. But he didn't get spun, so hopefully no penalty there. 
Oh, Gatting is through now. So she's made the par stick up to sixth position. They need a good result here, the Iron Dames. Second in the championship. They want to try and deny the 33 Corvette victory here. Corvette coming down the pit lane, serving a drive through for speeding in the pits. Don't know if that was Ben Keating earning coming in or Nico Veroni going out, but Veroni has to serve it anyway. And that is going to drop them down behind the pink Porsche that's coming up in the background. Into the pit lane comes the 54 Ferrari. Now, Thomas Floor started this car. They did a driver change after the safety car, but Floor has to do another 12 minutes, and that's trouble for another Ferrari and the LMP2 car, and one of the United cars, and it's Hansen down the inside. The Paris Compact was on the racing line. Hansen with the WRT rival right behind. Felt he had to make the move. There just was no space. On board in the Ferrari, right at the apex, clump, turned into a spin. And that will have destroyed his tyres. Battle for third in GTE Am, down to the first chicane. Michael Dynan in the orange Aston Martin being passed by Mikkel Pedersen in the 77 Proton Porsche. Just ahead of them, the GR Racing Porsche. It is a strong track for Porsche. And there's another Porsche driver, Rahul Frey. Here's her teammate, Michelle Gatting. She moves up to fourth, ahead of the ORT by TF Aston. And right behind is the 33 Corvette. Nico Veroni on the hunt here as well. They're looking for the championship. They need to finish probably in the top three to seal it, depending on what their closest rivals, the Iron Dames, do. Right now, the pink Porsche is ahead, but the yellow Corvette goes by the orange Aston. He is charging up behind the pink Porsche. Pit stop for Jose Maria Lopez, the race leader, comes back out. There's the battle with 99, Neil Jarni, Proton's privateer Porsche, leads here in Monza. The Proton team hadn't even seen that car before they did their seat fittings on Wednesday. Strong lineup, started by Jimmy Broody, now Neil Jarney, and Harry Tingle will do the anchor leg. Replay of the pass for fourth place, coming up to Varianti Ascari. And that is Alessandro Pierre Guidi going by jean eric Verne's 93 Peugeot, the car that led early on. Trouble for Thomas Floor. He's on an in-lap. This is the end of his driving stint. And the Swiss driver had to do a final 12 minutes to complete his minimum driving time, but the car has stopped. Leader is in, and that means the leader is now the number seven Toyota. Jose Maria Lopez really flying here. The crew know they're up against it, but they want to avenge their defeat by Ferrari at Le Mans. Somebody's off in the gravel. It's a Ferrari. Who is it? That's the number 21 car, Simon Mann. American driver, that's the second Lesmo again. And down the inside, the 60 Porsche from the Iron Lynx team makes contact under braking just as they're turning in. And Mann's got no way of saving it. Halfway through the six hours of Monza, Toyota leads from two Ferraris, a Peugeot and a pair of Porsches. Who's going to win? No clue yet. United Autosports number 23 car leads from WRT and Jota in LMP2, but that is a changeable mix as well. The lead has swapped so many times. Dempsey Proton's Porsche leading the Iron Dames Porsche and the championship chasing Corvette in third place in GTE Am. Just two cars out of the race. Simon Mann's 21 Ferrari has been rescued from the gravel trap. Full course yellow removed. The full course yellow has been lifted and here we are back to racing again for second place. Michelle Gatting ahead of Nico Veroni. These are the championship leading cars. The Corvette is way ahead in the points of the Iron Dames Porsche. But if the Porsche can win here and the Corvette doesn't finish on the podium, the title hunt goes to the next race in Fuji at the end of September. Michelle Gatting making a good restart there. And that battle is right behind this one, the 99 Porsche just ahead of Rio Hirakawa, who is charging hard in the recovering number eight Toyota. 
And this happened right behind them. Michelle Gatin being passed by Nico Verone because an LMP2 car got down the inside of her, held her up in the chicane, and Verone went straight by. Driver change at the 51 Ferrari team. Alessandro Pierguini handing over to fellow world champion James Collado. They were the last GTE Pro world champions last year. Pierre Guidi looking like that was really hot work. Air temperature well into the 30s. Track temperature nearly 60 degrees Celsius. On board with Dane Cameron, James Collado comes hunting for sixth position. So many different strategies going on in this race. Hard to tell who's really where. So you've just got to get your head down and charge. And that's exactly what Collado is doing. Porsche versus Ferrari. That is a classic race. And Peugeot, so successful in several different iterations of top flight sports car racing. Can they put this car on the podium? We heard from this man, Paul DeResta, earlier on. He was not getting overexcited, but they are in third place. In from fourth is the Glickenhaus. Olivier Platt taking over from Roma Duma. This car started on pole position here last year, set the lap record as well. And the leaders are in. Kamui Kobayashi being strapped into the number seven Toyota. He takes over from Jose Maria Lopez. It's really hard on the car. I, I normally don't suffer the, the hot. I really liked it. <laughs> uh, it, it was hot out there. Um, but yeah, it, it's normally months out. This time of the year, it's always quite hot. So it's, it's hard for us, but also for the brakes, for the car. Yeah, it really puts everyone in... in in, in a difficult condition, let's say. James Collado chasing victory here for Ferrari. OK, mate, you're still catching. 28 seconds now, 28 seconds. It's not about the 99 Proton Porsche. It's about the number seven Toyota. They know that is the battle that they have to win if they're going to claim victory here in Monza. The car that won at Le Mans here is the Proton Porsche, driver change. And as he leaves the pit lane, Harry Tinknell will become the only man to have raced in every class in World Endurance history. GTM and Pro, Hypercar and LMP1 Hybrid. And LMP2. Well, they're gonna lose second place to the Ferraris as they drop down the order. And hard tire on the left rear. They're going for mediums on the other three corners. United Autosports leading from Team WRT and Jota. That is your one, two, three in LMP2. Two hours to go and about half a second separating the cars. On board with Ferdy Habsburg, the 31 WRT machine. Jota right behind. GTE Am battle, and this is for the lead. GR Racing ahead of the 77 car, and we're right behind with the Corvette. Nico Veroni with a great run down towards the Parabolica. Can he make it into second? Mikkel Peterson trying to hang on, can't do so. And now the GR Racing Porsche in front. They're having one of their best races of the season, but the Corvette is a light. Here he comes. Looking once more to try and make the pass. GR Racing's black and orange car in the hands of Ricardo Perra, but Nico Baroni's got the run on him. Nicky Katzberg loves that. He'll get in to do the final part of this race. And the Corvette, oh, just squeezes through. Ricardo Perra gave it everything in that black and orange GR Racing Porsche. Couldn't hang on. Proton versus Glickenhaus, the newest and one of the oldest hypercar teams. Glickenhaus were there right from the start with their 708 machine and straight by the Porsche. Now then, what's happened with the 99 car? Slowing right down, that's not good. Now, have they got an electronic problem? Yes, there is something very wrong with the 99 Proton car. Harry Tinknell is rolling to a halt at the Primo Varianti. Is this the end of their sensational debut? Four hours in, and less than two to go. Well, we've seen several times when cars have left the pit lane, the Porsches stop and you can recycle, turn them off and on again. Control, all delete. 
LMP2 action, 34 into Europol getting nudged off into the gravel at Ascari, battling with the Alpine. Well, both Alpines have struggled all season. They're going strongly here. A little too robust, perhaps, for the inter Europol car. No time to breathe in LMP2. Here is Gerard van der Gaard under pressure from Ferdi Habsburg, who takes to the grass to try and go round. You can see the Jota car right there in third place. Habsburg, though, having a real lunge of Van der Gaard. He only did a single stint at the beginning of the race, and now he's doing his second stint. And Habsburg coming right up behind him again. Well, look at this. Ferdy, do you think he flinched? No. Full on the throttle. Pit stops in the LMP2 battle. In comes 31 and the 28 Jota car. Full course yellow. We are under full course yellow. Well, now that might help the 31 WRT and the 28 Jota car. Because on their outlap, everybody else will be going slowly. A little bit of heat in the brakes there. They're running over a thousand degrees. Harry Tinknell, the full course yellow, was to rescue the Porsche, but he's actually got it going. The race leader, not quite sure whether he should go by or not. And all oh, the 31 car does go by. Ferdy Habsburg now should not have passed the number seven Toyota there. Uh, I think he suspected that both cars were disabled and he was a bit blindsided there, coming around Curva Grande, only doing 80 kilometers an hour. Ready, it's, 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 uh, it's in neutral here. I'm just rolling in first gear in neutral. Okay, we should have hybrid drive, we should have electric drive and then bump start. We are full course yellow. Wow, now that's a concept, using the electric hybrid motor to get the car rolling fast enough to effectively drop the clutch and get the petrol engine started, but it's not worked. That is race over. It's a shame for Harry that he's missing uh, kilometers, miles on, on, on his back, uh, shoulders, but yeah, uh, it, these things is happening, uh, especially with these uh, uh, new categories. And uh, yeah, we, we try to see when the car will be back. Uh, I know we have some uh, throttle sensor issues. Uh, we tried to make uh, some uh, reset, uh, but it didn't work. So we'll be for sure stronger in Fuji. On board with Michel Gatti and Nyan Dames, Porsche, and they've lost ground to the Corvette as we go back to green flag racing. And a little bit of cooling refreshment in the Corvette garage for the hard work mechanics. Temperatures over 30 degrees Celsius. Nearly 100 degrees Fahrenheit, and nearly 130 degrees of track temperature. Astonishing heat. All oh, trouble for the Glickenhaus. Gets in very deep under braking and loses the spot to the 51 Ferrari. That's the change for fourth. And the Jota Porsche right behind. That is a lap down on them, though. On board with the Glickenhaus over the curbs. Ferrari goes straight by. Race leader Kamui Kobayashi, the red and white Toyota, in the middle of the frantic GTE AM battle for supremacy. 77 Porsche in front of him. He's just gone by that orange Aston Martin. And Kobayashi, like his teammates, really with the hammer down. They desperately want to beat Ferrari here. Okay, 30, eight laps to go, eight laps to go. We are under investigation for the full call zero, so try to make as big a gap as possible. Eight laps to go, we don't keep the tires. And that investigation, of course, when he passed the Toyota under full course yellow. This is the view from the number seven car who wasn't sure whether to pass the 99 Porsche or not. And Ferdy had to swerve by them both. And sure, WRT here will argue the toss on that one. Okay, Kamui Gap is 20 seconds. Now it's time to push. They are on new tyres. They're not going to change tyres the next run. Kamui Kobayashi knows the deal. He's got to try and build a bigger gap ahead of the Ferrari because they will need new tyres into the closing stages. 
in the pit lane, Ferrari 51, Antonio Giovinazzi taking over from James Collado. These are the Le Mans winners. And they and the six Penske Porsche have stopped at the same time. Here comes the 50 Ferrari, Antonio Fuoco chasing Kamui Kobayashi. Kobayashi's tyres 42 laps old, but they're the same age on the Ferrari. Not sure why Toyota think that Ferrari won't take tyres at the next stop. Behind Toyota and Ferrari, two teams battling for their first podium. The Peugeot, Paul De Resta, Fred Makoviki behind him in the number five Penske Porsche. And again, differing tyre strategies. And that is repeated up and down the field. We're just trying to figure out what we're going to do now for our last stop. Uh, what we do with tyres and things like that. So, But we had the advantage as well as doing a bit of a, a shorter stop on fuel. So... Yeah, let's see. It's going to be really tight when we leave the pits. But, yeah, it's been a fun race so far, but Camus doing a mega job. Final stop, 46 minutes to go for the number seven race-leading Toyota. Now, cleaning the windscreen and fuel goes in. It is a tyre change, left sides and right sides. A full set of, look for the colour, yellow, medium tyres. Well, this is all about speed now for Kamui Kobayashi. Trying to make the most of it on the outlap. The number 50 Ferrari is in the very next lap. Will they take tyres? The Peugeot comes across the line and that is the new race lead of the 93 car. But look, it's almost empty. It will need to stop as well in the next two or three laps. But it is still in the hunt for a podium. Ferrari is in and a tyre change here as well. A set of mediums going on. They look to be brand new on the left, scrubbed on the right-hand side. So they're going for a full set of fresh tyres, but Toyota come past. Toyota still has the lead, and Ferrari with new tyres. You can see the car squirming under power. Antonio Fuoco. Now then, 43 minutes to win here for the Scuderia. A scrub set have done one lap on the right-hand side, and the lefts are brand new. Game on. Relaxed Jean-Eric Venn in the Peugeot garage. Here's the 93 car. This will be their final stop of the race as well. No driver change. Drinks bottle being topped up for De Resta. Thumbs up from the Scot. And he's just necking a drink there while he's stationary. Through comes the seven Toyota. Antonella Coletta, the Ferrari boss, Mike Conway, and everybody at Toyota watching with bated breath. In GTE Am, the 77 Dempsey Proton car, Julian Andlauer, absolutely flying now at the head of the field, ahead of the 60 Porsche from Iron Links and the 86 Porsche from GR Racing. Ferrari struggling in Am, but Corvette leading the championship. Fourth place with the Iron Dames behind in fifth will be enough to take the title if they can make it through the final half an hour. 31 WRT into the pit lane from the race lead. And that will cycle the 36 Alpine through to the top of the pile as he comes up behind the GR Racing Porsche of Ben Barker looking for a podium in the GTE AM category. Away goes Robin Freins. Here comes the Jota 28 car. And that moves ahead of the 31 machine from WRT. They drop in behind the Corvette and the Van Wall hypercar. So the battle is on for the podium. Robin Freins in third place out of the pit lane. Alpine lead from Jota. Frantic action in hypercar. Oh, Antonio Giovinazzi just swipes the Iron Dames Porsche as they go through the Roger. And Rahel Frey had to take to the runoff area. Swapping positions, through goes the number 50 car. Antonio Giovinazzi chasing the Porsche from the Iron Dame's viewpoint. Oh, visibility is so limited in these cars. Oh, the Alpine is off. And this is at Ascari. What's happened there? Andre Negrau straight off, bounces across the grass. Boop. Ow. Drama for the 31 Jota team. Robin Fryan's pushed back into the garage. They've already had to top it up with oil at a couple of pit stops. Looks like the engine may be done. 
Leader is in the pit lane, the number 36 Alpine, and that will cycle the 28 Jota car to the top of the pile, ahead of United's 23 car and 41 from WRT. This could be a big day for the Jota team. Pietro Filipaldi at the wheel, who put it on pole, it's all over. That's Robin Frines out of the 31 car at WRT. What could have been a win, Ferdi Habsburg goes to commiserate. They are done. Battle just off the podium in hypercar. The red Ferrari, Antonio Giovinazzi, he's in fifth place behind him, alongside him. And just about to go by him is the number eight Toyota. After two penalties incurred in the first hour of the race, it's fighting its way back into contention. And Brendan Hartley can't quite squeeze through there, but the Ferrari in very deep under braking. Here comes Hartley, gets better drive off the corner around the outside in Curva Grande, and that gives him track position on the inside, down to the Variante della Roggia, the second chicane. Ahead of them is the number five, Porsche in fourth place. Hartley's up to fifth. They nearly lost the lap of the leaders, and now they are in the points. Here comes Brendan Hartley, Fred Makaviki in front of him in fourth place. This is an astonishing recovery from the never give up number eight crew. The championship leaders, don't forget. Through he goes for fourth. Makaviki in the Porsche. Their chances of a podium ebbing away. 51 Ferrari. Makaviki put up a stellar defence, but still through on the inside comes Antonio Giovinazzi. And the crowd will respond well to that as the Ferrari goes wheel to wheel and squeezes through. Car 51 reported to the stewards for overtaking beyond track limits. Well, that is Giovinazzi going out wide over the white line at the top of the picture. Look. All four wheels off the track effectively, although there is tarmac there. The white line is the boundary of the racing area. It was only for a few metres, but if he hadn't done that, he wouldn't have got by. Final lap of a frantic six-hour race here in the sweltering heat of the Autodromo Nazionale di Monza. And Kamui Kobayashi, the man who put the number seven Toyota on pole, will take it through to the chequered flag. His teammates running to the wall to celebrate. It has been a tough race for everybody, but the number seven Toyota comes out on top. Victory in Monza, important for that team in the championship. Ferrari take second and Peugeot will claim their first ever podium. But jubilation for Mike Conway, Jose Maria Lopez, Kamui Kobayashi and the Toyota team. There's Alex Wurtz, uh, driver, manager and the whole team thrilled to a beaten Ferrari here at Monza. No question who the crowd favourite is. And the 50 car on the podium in second place. But a vital win for the number seven Toyota team. It's a sea of red. And this one will feel good. After a, a tough Le Mans, yeah, it was important to, to bounce back. Um, yeah, the team did a, a great job. Um, unfortunately, Car 8 had a, a complicated race, but at the end they recovered well. So really happy. I mean, Mike, again, a great job in the star and Kamui as always. So I'm very proud of these guys. I'm very proud of the team. And yeah, it, it feels nice, you know, third win on the, of the year. Uh, we've been some, a bit unlucky, but yeah, this, this put us again on the game. So really happy. Great day for the number 28 Jota car. They win in LMP2. Great starting stint from David Heinemeyer Hansen and his teammates. Oliver Rasmussen and Pietro Filipaldi finished the job. GTM, victory going to the 77 Porsche. Christian Reed, last year's winner with new teammates Mikkel Pedersen and Julian Andlauer. But it is a championship win for the 33 Corvette team. Ben Keating, Nicky Katzberg and Nico Veroni.
The first race at Sebring in March, their champions in July. And they won't get their trophy until Bahrain in November. Victory overall and in hypercar for Toyota. A first podium for Peugeot, a big day for them. And Ferrari savouring the moment with second. And the adulation of the Tifosi. Post-race penalties for the 51 Ferrari and the number eight Toyota for exceeding power limits have dropped them a fraction back down the order. So the championship remains very much alive. But with a sea of fans below them, our top three enjoy their moment of celebration. And next time out, Ferrari will want to take their revenge on Toyota on their home turf at Fuji in Japan. The glory of the fight.